Hello, and welcome to another scintillating, exhilarating episode of Draw With Me. And me is Danny Gregory, one of the folks from Sketchbook School. So hopefully you are ready to do some drawing with me today. And I will blather for a little bit and allow you in the meantime to get your stuff together. What is the stuff that you'll need? You'll need a sketchbook. You'll need one pen, or possibly two, or possibly three, or more. But for now, let's choose one. And then you're going to need something that has the ability to re reflect and possibly refract and possibly distort light. So it could be uh, a glass of water, it could be a bottle, it could be a vase, or in my case, a teapot, a metal covered teapot. Isn't this beautiful? It's uh, got a special warming cover that covers the porcelain tea teapot and keeps the contents piping hot. So I'm going to be drawing that just because it has this beautiful reflective thing. Um, so go off, root around your house, and see if you can find something. Because what we really want to focus on today is drawing um, things that are reflected. You know? So if you had a glass of water and it was reflecting the room, that would be great. If it's just a glass of water that looks kind of black or clear, probably not so good. Because we want to really focus on distortions and refractions and reflections okay so hopefully you're hearing me and you're also hearing the, the garbage truck that's backing up outside do let me know if uh, if you're with me are you thumbs up somebody just so that I don't waste a lot of time talking to just me because I know what I have to say about this matter and maybe you don't so um, good so here we are and I'm going to be drawing in an analog fashion today. I'm not, I, I have my iPad with me, but I'm going to be drawing with a pen and paper. And uh, you can do that, or you could draw on an iPad too. And um, you know, the iPad is uh, is a fantastic tool, um, and I enjoy drawing on it. Now, and actually, I am going to show you an iPad drawing later on. But as you may know, um, we are getting ready to launch the. Uh, be an iPad artist class featuring me and uh, this drawing of of a friend's dog whose name is Lou, the dog that is, and um, it is going to be starting on Monday, Monday. So hopefully you're signed up. Hopefully you've got your iPad. You've got your implement for drawing on your iPad. It could be a finger. It could be crayon, uh, a pencil, a stylus, what have you. Um, so that's going to be starting on Monday. I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about it more, some more. And if you have a lot of questions about this class, and I understand that because it's, it's a new dang fangled thing, if you have a lot of questions about it, that's cool. Tomorrow I'm going to be doing um, a session just devoted to that to answer any of your questions. And that will be same place, YouTube, same channel, Sketchbook School channel. Uh, same time, noon Eastern Standard Time, and I will be answering all your questions then. But today we're going to focus more on just drawing and reflecting, okay? So, uh, okay, so we're, I see questions are starting to flood in. Um, if I was using an iPad, which brush would I use to draw today? Well, I'm not. Uh, I would use probably a relatively fine one. So I'm going to be using a relatively fine pen, this pen here which is uh, one of my favorites. I've mentioned it many times before. It's made by Tombow. It is a manga pen, um, and it has this flexible tip that makes it nice and almost brush-like. They refer to this as a brush, but it's not really a brush. It's a single piece of hard plastic, but it bends a bit, and it comes in a couple different sizes. So that is, uh, that is nice. Um, and I'm going to be just working in my in my regular old sketchbook, 
which uh, let's have a look at my sketchbook because it's it is you may not have seen it in a while but here this is actually um, a drawing that I did when I was in France in Brittany uh, of an old shed and I drew that so so let's just pick our implements pick uh, our page. I'm going to use this bulldog clip to attach it, and um, let's let's get to this. Let's get to drawing reflections. Now, I'm, you're probably not going to be able to see what I'm drawing. You're just going to be able to see my drawing of it. So um, that will that will mean that you have to draw your own thing. Draw your own. Draw your own thing. I'm going to be drawing my own thing. My own thing, by the way, contains. A reflection of me in it. It's one of the fun things about drawing a reflection. Let me show you, so you can see that what I'm going to be drawing is not just this object, but this. You know, I, th I think it's a question that we often ask ourselves: like, how do you draw shiny stuff? How do you draw metal? How do you draw glass? Well, you draw it like you draw a lot of things by looking at it carefully and looking at its qualities. And in this case, this is a mirror, and it's a distorting mirror, so it's going to be. Um, showing me me and it's also going to be showing me and you the room around it so think about that um and uh let us let us begin here we go so i'm gonna begin by uh drawing the outline i don't know if you can see this i wonder if i should move this you know what i might move this will you hold on for one second um and let's just chat while I move this camera, because I suddenly realized that it would probably be more interesting to you if it was on this side of me, so you could see my drawing rather than the back of my hand. So I'll probably suggest that. You continue as you are. Do not worry about this. Um, yeah, so today is Thursday. Yesterday was was Wednesday, September 11th, which is, of course, an important date to everybody, really. Um, but it was particularly important to us as New Yorkers. It was something that meant a lot, and um, we were thinking about about that. Um, let's go back and see how this worked. Yeah, we were thinking about about the events that happened here in New York yesterday. And, uh, you know, it's been going on now. I mean, it was the 18th anniversary yesterday, so it's, it's become almost part of the landscape of New Yorkers. So many people come to New York now to, to go to Ground Zero and to, um, you know, to, to see the site of, of where all this stuff happened. Um, and I was living right where I am now on September 11th. And um, we watched everything happen right from our balcony. It was right here. And um, let's see a day that will remain with us. So a time for reflection, which seems appropriate given what we're going to be drawing today. That, that I think is going to be better. Now you can, now you can see. Good. So you can see. Uh, that was that was exhausting moving that camera. I think I need to sip some tea. Okay. That's enough folder roll. Enough stalling. Let's get back to drawing. A lot of times when I draw, I like to begin by drawing the, the biggest shapes first. In this case, I'm just going to focus on drawing the, uh, the outline of this whole thing. And then we'll get into the details of it. the inside shapes. So you start by, or I start by drawing these bigger shapes. Whoops. Kind of 
misplaced my drawing on the page a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I ran into this teapot again when I was in France this summer because some friends we were staying with had the same teapot, which I'd never seen anybody else have. It's, it's nice to encounter it again. So yesterday, as I said, we um, we had 9-11 going on, and the main thing that 9-11 has come to mean on an annual basis is that they turn on these amazing lights up in the sky, uh, and those lights are this tribute to giant beacons into the sky that represent where the buildings used to be. And they turned those on last night. We see them every year. Um, and we were also, as it happens, filming a new class for Sketchbook School yesterday, too. One that's just we've just begun filming we have a lot of work to do on it yet and it's not going to be coming out until until um, I don't know a few more months it's a lot of work to do these things um, but the artist who was doing the demonstration for us yesterday that we were filming he decided to do a piece of art that was informed by September 11th which was nice so it was kind of a memory So now I have my basic outline, I'm going to start think, really paying attention to what is going on here internally. And uh, this teapot is porcelain, so the porcelain has its own reflective aspects too. It is, it is white, but it is also many different shades of gray and almost pink in places because of course it's reflecting the light around it so um, I am going to try and capture some of that I'm also going to think about what is my strategy for shading this because you know obviously I'm using black ink lines on white paper and yet I'm trying to reflect uh, I'm trying to represent all these different subtle colors and gradations in the in the in the reflections of this teapot so um, I'm, my strategy in this case is going to be to use hatches in other words lines that represent tones and I'm going to when it comes to the spout of the teapot I'm going to represent the curvature of this teapot with my lines. So I'm kind of bending them a bit and wrapping them around. And then I'm going to put in a second set of lines down here that represent a slightly darker tone. And I'm going to leave this white space empty because that's where a pure white highlight is. And, um, and I'm going to do the same for this back thing, the back part. So you really have to sort of make some decisions early on rather than just plunge into it. You have to say to yourself, what am I going to do? Like in my case, I'm making my lines also vertical, moving up and down. You don't want your hatches to just be a bunch of scribbly lines. You want to have a, you want to have some kind of logic to them because in a way what you're seeing with these gradation lines is these are not literally there. These are not stripes, of course, 
on the porcelain, these are lines that represent something else. They represent tone. And so I have to make it clear to you, the viewer, that there is that this is a language. It's a language of tone. Um, and I don't want you to be confused by it and think, oh, this is a striped teapot. You know, I want your eye to kind of take all these lines together and make them into a gradation, make them into a tone. You see, so that's that's really the, the logic. You, and you have to decide, what is what is that language going to be made up of? You know, is it going to be made up of uh, cross hatches, which are lines that cross each other? Or is it going to be made up of parallel lines, which is what I'm doing here? Or is it going to be made up of uh, dots? That's another thing in your toolkit. Dots um, or speckles. Uh, or is it going to be made up of uh, d different shades of gray? I mean, you could go out and get yourself a bunch of gray markers and do it that way, too. You know, and of course, when you're working in shades of gray, you're not necessarily representing something that is gray, right? You're not saying this is a gray surface. So the subject thistle, for those of you who are late to class, the subject is reflections. So please try drawing something that is reflective. OK, so now I've done basically the porcelain part of it, and I've done the uh, plastic feet of this teapot. And now I'm going to start working on the metal. Now, the bottom part of this teapot is basically reflecting the surface that it's sitting on. In this case, it's a, a stone table. So it is just dark. And so I'm looking at that. And again, I've decided to use these parallel lines, but I'm going to curve them a bit because I also want to represent the fact that this bottom of this teapot is, is curved. It's round. It's a ball. So I'm sort of subtly curving it, as you can see, to, uh, to represent that. And there's also, I'm noticing there's some darkness that, that covers this side of it, and it curves in. What's interesting about drawing reflections is it's, one of, it's a great subject because you are drawing something that is unfamiliar and that you don't necessarily know the rules of and you're discovering those rules by drawing it so you know when I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm discovering new things inside these reflections the reflections have um, what may, might have first be like a flat section but then it turns out it's not really that there are in fact um, just bits and shades in it so so there's this little scored line that runs around the edge of this teapot and I am realizing that it's not just a line it is in fact um, it has it has different dark areas to it so when you put in all those things your eye starts to recognize that this is a reflection now here's an interesting thing is this handle this white porcelain handle right here it's actually reflected in the metal. So I'm going to draw that reflection that comes down here. It's white, but it also has some gradation to it, some shadow. So that's something I, would, I wouldn't even thought was there, but it is. And then now what I'm also starting to do is this entire room that I'm sitting in is being reflected in this bowl. And this is, to me, the most fun part of doing this kind of a drawing, is I'm drawing the entire room while really just drawing this one little object. And you learn a lot about the room as you're drawing it, because it's all distorted and curved. Now, now this is the kind of thing that you might look and go, well, how am I ever going to do that? I don't know all the rules of you know, the, the ref how this thing is going to reflect and like how things are going to distort and change as they're reflected in this ball? Do I need to understand really the, the geometry of this whole thing? Do I need to focus on, are there, are there specific rules of distortion that are almost like perspective? Do I have to understand all that? My answer is 
Absolutely not. You just need to look. And when you look, you'll start to see, okay, this is like drawing anything. It's all just through observation. So I see curves, I see curved lines, I see shadows. Just draw them in. Um, it's not really any different than drawing anything else. It's just a matter of observation. So um, now what I've just drawn, this whole section that I just drew, is the wall right through there. There's a wall right there with windows in it. There are lights above. There's a view out that window. And all of that is contained in this small section here. Remarkable, but true. So I don't really need to spend a lot of time worrying about that or thinking about that. It is just there. But what I do need to think about is what is the placement of each of these parts? You know, what is the placement? Because um, I don't want to, as I'm working my way across this, I don't want to suddenly run out of space and realize, oh no, I didn't make this big enough. Now I'm going to draw the bookshelves that are behind. So to my left, um, with all these books and shelves and really complicated, but I can get them all in. I can see where they are, and you know I can fudge it a little bit. I don't have to draw every single paperback in exactly the right location. I just want to suggest that they're there, and they're also, of course. All these lines are being bent and distorted by the fact that they're reflected in this metal ball. So um, I'm just using kind of shorthand to, to sketch in all these book covers, but they're you know, just an indication. See, that what's interesting here is I'm actually drawing parallel lines to reflect, to represent books, whereas before I'd use parallel lines to represent tonality. So that's sort of an interesting um, conundrum there, right? Which is I'm drawing, am I making a mistake by doing that? Possibly. Like, are you going to look at this and not understand that they are books and think that they're just other bits of gray? You know what? So what? I don't really care. If you don't get it, if you don't fully understand it, that's not going to really make you upset, I don't think. Now I'm going to draw me. Because there I am, reflected in this ball as well. And um, as is this table that I'm drawing on. In fact, I, I screw this up a little bit because this big slab of table in here is, is a crucial part of it. And this drawing, the drawing itself, is of course here as well. There's my sketchbook and there's my meaty paw holding the pen. And there's my arm. All reflected in here. I have made my head a little big. I'm gonna adjust that a bit. And uh, then there's the room behind me. So this is sort of an interesting uh, piece of work because it is a still life because I'm drawing this object. It is uh, an architectural interior because I'm drawing the whole room. And now it turns out it's also a portrait because I'm in here as well, or it's a self-portrait. So you get whole bunch of different kinds of drawings in one and of course it is uh, a study in tone and it is an exercise in observation um, well drawings are always exercises in observation hopefully but now I'm wearing a striped shirt and that striped shirt is yet another set of parallel lines so what happens there it's all Again, something I have to kind of contend with in some way. Um, 
and then there's the back part of the room, and then this part of the room, it, 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 it curves up around here, and you can see some objects back there, and you can see some more stuff. I can't see, tell exactly what all these things are, because they're really distorted being this far around the edge of, um, of this ball. And then there's also some kind of darkness in this corner. But I'm going to indicate that way. And uh, there's some actually a light part of the room back here next to my head, so I'm going to indicate that. A bit of hair back here. So, um, and then there's, you know, there's, there's a bit of reflection here because this is the table, and there's the shadow that the teapot is throwing on the table, which is it's cast, but it's also this table is slightly shiny because it's stone, and so there's a bit of reflection down there as well. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of it. Um, let's, I'm gonna take a break, have a sip of tea. Gail says hatching is something I haven't learned to do. It looks challenging. Well, there's nothing wrong with a challenge. Uh, We've done an, a lot of different videos about about hatching and cross hatching. You'll find them here on our channel. You'll also find them. Uh, I, in fact, taught an entire course on uh, or a, a class on hatching in uh, a course we have called "That Looks Really Real," where I explained a lot of this stuff. And um, what else? Who else is there who would like to ask me any questions about this particular process? You know. So one of the things I wanted to point out to you was, um, as you see, I am drawing uh, on paper, but I'm also, uh, I've also drawn the same subject a couple different times. I wanted to show you that, actually. Let me just go back to that image and uh, show you. It's a different version I did of this a few days ago. I was wearing something different, the lighting was different, and uh, there it is. Two different uh, versions of the same teapot. For those of you who are late to this or have missed this, here's the teapot. There's me. There's the camera you're looking at. There's the entire room. As you can see, it's all, see there I am split in half. So it's interesting to draw a thing like this. I mean, if you see something like this in the flea market, grab it because uh, it's so interesting to draw. It has so many, um, you know, because you can take this with you anywhere. You could theoretically do a whole series of drawings with your teapot traveling to different places. Go, go and draw the Eiffel Tower reflected in it. Um, you know, or you could just get, of course, some kind of a reflective ball, a Christmas tree ornament, something like that. But it's really interesting because it, it forces you to look and to see and to not have preconceptions. Um, and speaking of the iPad, this is a version that I did on the iPad. This is, um, whoops, let me just, yeah, so this is a version I did on the iPad. Um, and this has two things. You could totally do this drawing, of course, the same way I just did it. You could do it by uh, just simply drawing this with ink, and then you could draw it with white ink. So you could draw it on a piece of colored paper, tonal paper, and the toned paper would represent the mid values. The black ink would represent the dark values, and the white would represent the highlights. So you know, in any given situation, when you start to observe something, and this is often relevant when you're drawing, when you're doing hatching and cross hatching and thinking about tone, is you might want to decide, like, what is the range of values that I'm seeing? Like, what's super black? What's pure white? And what's halfway in between those two things? If you look at a black and white photograph, the camera has done all that work for you, and it's kind of figured out what the what the range of things is. 
Um, but it's up to you as an artist to also do that, to say, okay, I'm going to look at, maybe I'm going to decide what is the midtone. I'm going to start with the midtones. And I'm going to work my way up, build my hatching and my um, cross hatching and my, my stippling, which is dots. I'm going to keep layering those things until eventually those areas become pure black. And then I'm also going to go back to my midtones and I'm going to now decide what gets progressively lighter and what becomes pure white. And you can do, you can practice this by just simply drawing a rectangle on your page of your sketchbook and trying to make gradations that go from black to white and all the steps in between. And there can be an infinite number of steps. So if you look at a camera, a photograph by a camera, there, there appear to be infinite variations. Uh, it's, and but you can also break that down. So you could have 32, 16, 8, 4, 2 very gradations. So you can say there's pure black, there's middle tone, and there's white. Or there's pure black, there's kind of dark, there's middle tone, there's kind of light, and there's white. So you can set that up and say, okay, I, I'm going to have a, a little alphabet to myself, a little language, and you could set that up as you're learning to do these gradations. So gradation is really interesting figuring out tones, figuring out how to do that. In this case, with this drawing that I did on the iPad, um, you know, there's some, you can see the pure white highlights, and you can see, uh, of course, the pure black, like the table, and then you can see, like, the bottom of the teapot is black, but with some lines in it, and those lines make it not be pure black, make it be a little bit gray, but kind of black, you see. So, uh, you know, lots of different ways of doing that. Um, let's go back and look at this thing again. Um, you know, so I had different strategies here. Let me park this a bit. Um, so like this, you see the difference in the way that I treated the bottom here versus the way I treated the bottom there. Uh, you can see the difference between the way I treated the, uh, get some more light on this. Um, you see how close these ones are that I just did? And here, they were a bit looser and less, less intense. So, you know, your, your strategy can vary and your technique can vary because of that. Um, yes, so I see uh, Jen reflect, mentions uh, MC Escher. Yes, so Escher has that really famous drawing of him, I guess it's himself, holding up a ball in his hand, and you see his hand, and then you see the reflection of his hand, and you see, of course, him, um, and the drawing kind of gives you the feeling of you are him looking, which is great, really interesting. Uh, Escher, of course, is a master of creating drawings of impossible things, and uh, he, he was uh, a really fantastic graphic artist. If you don't know M.C. Escher, please look him up. I think you will be glad that you did. And um, what else? What other questions do we have? Anne says she's drawing her reflection in a stainless steel coffee pot. Yeah, that's great. Uh, a toaster, uh, any appliance is great. And then you get to draw your entire kitchen, and um, you get to draw the object itself. And of course, again, thinking about the strategy, like how are you going to? Because I think reflecting, capturing the reflections. You know, that, I mean, that's another thing for those of you who are drawing things that weren't reflective. If you were, for instance, drawing a glass of water, well, that glass of water is also going to have lots of gradations. There's going to be areas that are very, very dark. There are going to be areas that are reflecting the light in the room. Then there's also going to be the transparency of the glass itself. How are you going to capture that? Um, how are you going to decide whether, uh, you know, what system what language you're going to have to do that. Here, let me show you another iPad drawing. So here's a drawing that I did of a glass of water. You can see how much stuff there is going on in here, how many colors, right? You think of water as being transparent, but of course, it's reflecting the whole room around it. It has these lines that are the lines in the glass. 
It has these little dots that are the air bubbles, but then of course there's all these colors and reflections as it reflects the room around it, which is sort of interesting. Um, I have a whole section here of just beverages. So um, there's a bottle that's reflecting something. Here's, I'll show you another bottle. This bottle, this is actually a demonstration that I do in my iPad class. What iPad class, you say? Well, it's called Be an iPad Artist. Yes, and I do a demonstration that, in which I make this thing that you're looking at here, and I explain how to break down all of these elements and to create layers of transparency and do all this stuff. So it's pretty intense. Um, but when you see how you do it, it's actually very manageable and you'll understand, oh, okay, I just need to look at it a certain way. And then you can build up something that looks relatively photorealistic like that. Um, or of course, yeah, here's another bottle. You can see all the reflections there. What's great about the working on the iPad, of course, is that you can use these solid colors and you can also have transparent colors and translucent colors so you're not uh, doing what I do with ink where I'm translating variations and in shades into a system of lines, hatching, cross-hatching, stippling. The iPad you can actually make a gray that looks like that. So that's a kind of a grayish water bottle. As you can see there's water in it. You can also see it's reflecting a lot of stuff around it. And um, I'll show you another. This is a drawing that I did um, where is it? Um, I did a drawing on a train. I can't find it at the moment. Oh, here it is. Um, I did a drawing on a train of these two bottles. So those bottles um, are, you know, they're reflecting each other. They have the light that's coming from the window of the train. There's all this stuff going on. And this is just by observing what's there and putting it in there. So, um, so there you have it. All right, Carla doesn't have a stainless steel coffee pot. Now I don't know what to tell you. How about a, a Pyrex coffee pot? Reflections on a bowl are a good way to practice fisheye perspective? Yeah, absolutely, that's, that's fisheye, right? That's, that is a fish, uh, fisheye meaning it distorts it into the round. And uh, um, so, if you have that, then then you are in, in business. In the end, I wouldn't say that there was necessarily a technique for drawing fisheye perspective. I mean, there might be. I don't know it. I do it by looking, by looking at something that is that gives you a fisheye perspective and is drawing what I see there, as you can see. Um, Sarah is drawing a dimple beer glass. See, that's what's interesting about having dimples and conca concave and convex shapes is, of course, they're going to be reflecting light differently than the body of the beer glass would be. So you're going to get highlights and shadows that are different from the other parts of the glass. And that's interesting. You have to have a strategy for how are you going to approach that. I'm not sure what Sarah's doing, but I'm sure that's an interesting experience. Um, so good. Um, Stoikart says, on the iPad, I find very good for cross-hatching the pencil from the notes app. So you're just drawing using the notes app. Interesting. I mean, why not buy Procreate? It costs 10 bucks. It's an infinite art supply store. And, uh, you know, if you do that, then you will, um, you know, you can do drawings, paintings, and do lots of other kinds of things that are, that are fun and interesting. Um, all right. Laura says, do you handle reflections in mirrors differently? How do you show the flat surface while showing dimensional reflections? I would just say look at what you're, well, look at what you're drawing. You know, what, what are you seeing in the mirror? And how is it different? I mean, is the lighting in the mirror different than the lighting outside? Are you drawing the outside? Are you drawing the back of a person looking into a mirror? Well, you know, the lighting might be different because the, the mirror and the face of the person might be front lit, whereas the back of the person might be back lit. So the lighting is different. Again, I don't think that there are any particular rules. There aren't any particular 
um, things. It's just strategies that you use for taking what you're seeing and turning it into lines on paper, which is basically what drawing is, right? It's, it's a conversion of how to take things from one thing to the other. Um, Thistle said she made the mistake of uh, putting the crystal ball in the window. Morning light changes quickly. That is interesting. Again, uh, what is your strategy for dealing with that? Because your reflections are going to change. Um, do you maybe maybe that you're distorting your drawing with the movement of time? So you could draw something which has one set of lighting conditions on one side of it, and as you move across, as you continue drawing, maybe the lighting is changing, and that's another set of distortions. Interesting, you know. It could, so you're representing time in a drawing as well as distortions and reflections. There are all these different things that are going on that will make the drawing more interesting. Because in the end, you're drawing something that's not terribly interesting inherently, a ball, a teapot. But when it when you take in all these other things, it suddenly becomes really interesting. Daunting, perhaps, when you first think about it. But when you break it down into these elements, break it down into the outside and then the inside reflections, and then thinking about your strategy for capturing it, all that will work. Um, so, Sarah, do not be, do not be. Dis I mean, hopefully, when you say it's really complicated, that's not a bad thing. My favorite things to draw are really complicated things. There's so many details to observe, um, and also when something's really complicated, you can get away with stuff. You can get away with making mistakes because the eye of the viewer is sort of overwhelmed by all these different details. So, complication is really interesting and and takes you deeper. I think it's a, it's a great um, kind of problem to have. So, hey, I wanted to point out something to you, which I meant to tell you at the beginning, and that is this newsletter. So we've just come up with a newsletter for Draw With Me. Because you might find, like, oh, I forgot that it's happening, or oh, I didn't get the announcement, or I didn't mark it on my calendar. So if you sign up to this thing, Draw With Me Weekly, you will get an email that will remind you usually the day of or maybe the night before hey tomorrow there's gonna to be a draw with me come and join us and it will just you know it's a short little email but it's just a way of of keeping on top of it of course another way is is to subscribe to this YouTube channel do that and uh, you will be a reminder but go to bit.ly slash DWM weekly and make sure you get all the capitalizations right I'll leave that up there so you can write it down in your sketchbook bit.ly so you just type that right into your browser bit.ly slash dwmw weekly weekly so all caps d w m w weekly all right that will um that will keep you informed you know because here's the thing and this is the reason that i wanted to nudge you with signing up for this newsletter or subscribing to this channel is the purpose of draw with me is to get together on a regular basis because ultimately the key to enjoying drawing more is to get better at it to to hone your skills to tighten your observational abilities to learn new techniques and trips and so forth but really the key is practice keep doing this on a regular basis so hopefully by joining me every Thursday you'll do at least one drawing a week Hopefully you'll be inspired to do more than that. But do what you can to remind yourself that this is something you need to do on a regular basis. Open your calendar and just book out some time, an, an artist date between you and your sketchbook that you're going to say, you know what, on Thursdays at noon Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to draw with Danny, but maybe on Sunday at 9 a.m. I'm going to have my bagel and I'm going to draw it as well and I'm going to make a habit of doing that. Having a habit is the way to progress. And, you know, an important thing to remember about having a drawing habit is you're not going to, unfortunately, have an instant transformation. You're not going to suddenly go from zero to hero. You're going to make incremental developments. You're going to learn a little bit at a time. Your skills are going to get a little bit better um, by practicing. And each of those increments may not seem that big at the time, but they multiply. They, uh, they, they increase. And having a sketchbook 
And having a way to look back at your progress on a regular basis is a way to reward yourself and say, boy, I am actually making progress. Each week when I look at these drawings, they're getting better. I'm feeling more confident. Uh, I'm taking more risks. I'm reflecting who I am as an artist more and more uh, in this incremental way. So, so that's something to think about. Um, and this newsletter and this web, this YouTube series and a lot of the things that we do at Sketchbook School are all designed to do that. Like for instance, if you sign up for a class with us, we will send you an email each time there's new materials for the class to remind you, hey, come back, let's do some more drawing. And we're going to be doing that more and more because um, we really are trying to focus on this notion of habit. How can you habituate yourself to drawing so that it becomes a regular part of your life? It's not just something you do once because you took a workshop or even if you just took a sketchbook school course. It's really something that you make a regular part of your life and that you learn lots of different things to draw, lots of different ways to draw them, and they eventually um, just, you know, it just becomes part of who you are that you are a person who draws, you are an artist. And that's really one of the most rewarding things about this whole thing is that process. So, all right, with that, I will leave you. Um, so I've reminded, let me remind you one final time, of course, of uh, this, the course that we have coming up. It starts on Monday, you can sign up right now. If you've been delaying, I'm not sure why you've been delaying, but um, if you have questions about your technology, let's meet here tomorrow, Friday at noon, and uh, I will be answering those specific technological questions you might have about the iPad course. Um, and if you are waiting because you don't have the money to pay for the full thing right now, that's fine. We have a payment plan. You can pay in increments that are really manageable. And this course has an enormous amount of stuff. It's going to take you a while to work through it. You have lifetime access to it, of course, so you can take your time learning all the tips and tricks that are in there. But also, I think this course, more than just teaching you sort of technical things about using Procreate, it's going to talk to you about the journey that I've been on for two years, which is really changing how I see because of the tools that I've gotten from this whole process. Technical tools, sure but also just a different way of seeing the world, different way of seeing the art that I make. Um, it's gone deeper because of drawing with the iPad, and I talk about that. I'd also talk about what is digital art and should we like it? What does it even mean? Like, what are the limits of digital art? Can we make digital art that doesn't look like digital art? Should we be using the iPad to replicate what we do with a watercolor set? A lot of things like that. I talk about ideas as well as taking you through every button and bell and whistle that are part of this incredible tool. So it's going to be really fun. I can't wait till Monday arrives and everybody jumps in and starts posting their stuff and talking about it. It's going to be very, very exciting. So I hope to see you there. And uh, you can sign up at sketchbookschool.com. And uh, I will see you tomorrow if you have questions. Otherwise, I will see you next week at... Uh, I believe the same time. We might we might have to move it one hour earlier next week, but I'm hoping that it will be again noon Eastern Standard Time. And if you're wondering, sign up for the newsletter and you'll find out. Uh, that is that's all I've got. Newsletter address one final time. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for drawing with me. Bye bye.